advanced accounting 12 consolidation of a majority owned subsidiary. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, our email, and our phone number. And you'll see that the source for this presentation is the advanced accounting textbook from McGraw Hill, Chapter 5. I want to repeat the definition of the differential when we're talking about consolidating parents and subsidiaries. There is a differential if one of two things exists. Either the fair value of the assets is more than book value, or that there's goodwill that exists that it hasn't been recorded yet, which is going to be a new asset on the books. In order to understand differential, it's important to remember that all balance sheet items may have a market value that changes. Vehicles, buildings, investment securities, lots of different things. And not only that, but liabilities like bonds payable can change in market value. Therefore, their fair value changes. So one more thing to remember is in consolidation, we need to eliminate the activity between the parent and the sub. And what we're going to do to recognize the purchase of the subsidiary is to take the subsidiary's equity off of the books by debiting equity accounts. You'll see in the last bullet point here at the bottom. We're going to debit common stock and retain earnings to reduce them. And we're going to credit the investment account to reduce that. So in consolidation, we look at the two companies as if they're together. In this example, we're going to have an 80% ownership interest acquired by the parent, and we're going to refer to that as a majority interest. And what we really mean in bullet point one is there is a controlling interest of 80% ownership, and what that really means is 80% of the shareholder voting is controlled by the parent. The non-controlling interest has 20%, the remainder. What's new in this video is, is that we're going to start calculating the financial impact of both the majority and the minority interest. And we're going to look at income or losses, dividends, the differential calculation, and also goodwill. And in this case, we're going to see an example of goodwill impairment. I flipped over to Excel. And here's our example. The purchase detail, and the first thing we're going to talk about is consolidated net income. Let's assume Levi's Jeans acquires 80% of a similar company, Hollywood Jeans, and the price that they pay is equal to the book value. Let's further say that we have some financial results for both companies. Levi's in 2010 has net income of 120000 Hollywood has twenty five. And if Levi's owns 80% of Hollywood, under the equity method, they get 80% of the net income, which would be 80% of the $25,000 or $20,000. We can use that information to look at consolidated net income. We take Levi's net income, the $120,000, and then to avoid double counting, we're going to subtract Levi's share of Hollywood's net income which is 80% of the $25,000 or $20,000. So you can see that these two cells are linked. Then we include Hollywood's net income. So we come up with consolidated net income of $125,000, which is the same thing as if we would have added these two across. It's important, though, to show, because of the equity method, and Levi's is getting that $20,000 that we subtracted off here and then add in all of Hollywood here. Another reason that we did that is we also have to calculate the income that's attributable to the non-controlling interest, which is a new term, which you can also think of as the minority interest. And that amount is Hollywood's net income less the portion that Levi's gets that we've already calculated as $20,000. And what's left over is $5,000. So if we're looking at consolidated net income, just for the controlling parent Levi's, we need to subtract that $5,000. What we're left with then is income attributed to the controlling interest. Controlling means Levi's. And to put a finer point on it, controlling means that we, own, we have more than 50% of the ownership of the shareholder voting rights of control.
let's further assume that there are some asset values where the fair value of certain assets is more than the book value. So we're saying for inventory, fair value is 5,000 higher. For land, inventory is 10,000 higher. And for building and equipment, 60,000 for a total fair value increased over book value of $75,000. We're going to use that number here in a minute. Now we go to something we've already seen, which is differential. Again, 80% of Hollywood was acquired at its book value, and in this case, we're going to do an analysis of the differential. I'm going to get rid of the debt issue because that was from a prior video. Levi's purchases 80% of Hollywood's jeans for 310,000 cash. And the non-controlling interest that's owned by the minority owner is $77,500. That's going to come in handy here in a minute. So on Levi's jeans books, the first entry is to increase an asset account called investment in Hollywood jeans. We pay cash, so this journal entry is to recognize the purchase of Hollywood jeans, and that's going to be posted on Levi's jeans balance sheet before we do our elimination entries. You're also able to go back to Advanced Accounting 7 to get the definition of a deferral of de a deferential, which I already defined in the PowerPoint at the beginning. If we take the total fair value of the assets, it's the purchase price of the 80% that Levi's pays, plus that non-controlling interest that the minority holder has. So the total fair value of the entire company, of all of Hollywood in total, is 387500 So that's the fair value that we put right here in the differentiate in the differential calculation. We further say that we're going to take the common stock and retained earnings of Hollywood off the books by debiting. So here is the book value, which is 300000 We're going to see that over here on the balance sheet. So we've looked at book value and fair value. Fair value, book value. There is a differential of 87005 Now, why does the differential exist? Two reasons, the fair value of specific assets is greater than book value or goodwill exists. We saw that in the definition at the beginning. So here's the detail on how this all occurred. The fair value of the consideration, 387500 The fair value of the net assets, and where we get that is, if we go to the balance sheet, and here's the column for Hollywood, We see that assets of 500 minus liabilities 200 plus the excess of fair value over book value gets us 375,000. So the 375 comes from the book value of the assets, which is here, assets minus liabilities to get a book value of 300,000 plus the excess of fair value over book value here. We add those together and we get 375 here. So the differential is made up of two things. The consideration paid over fair value, 12,500, we're going to find out that's goodwill. And the excess of fair value over book value of 75,000. That's the end of Advanced Accounting 12. We'll continue the example in the next video. You can get hour-long presentations on various topics, financial, management, accounting, and others. Our YouTube channel to register for individual one-on-one -on -one tutoring using gotomeeting.com. Here's our website, our email, and our phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.